Hello and welcome into Ray Fisher Stadium at Wilpon Baseball and Softball Complex here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today on a beautiful sunny afternoon, Michigan baseball gets to say, take on the University of Delaware in what will be a matchup between a hot Michigan baseball team coming in, winning nine in a row, improving their record to 13-11, taking on the 13-9 Fighting Blue Pens. On the mound today for Michigan will be Tommy Henry, and for the Fighting Blue Hens, it will be Matt Hornick. My name's Jose Chris. I'm joined alongside me by Finn Storr. Eric Whitman is in the booth as well. He'll be joining us later in the game. Finn, what are you looking forward to in the game today? Well, the Wolverines have just been on fire in their last nine games. They've batted a combined, uh, they've a 317 combined batting average, outs per opponent, 74 to 35. Looking like a high powered offense, really to keep rolling here against the fighting Hats. We'll get you the Michigan lineup today. Batting first for them today will be Akeo Thomas and playing second base. Batting second and playing right field will be the sophomore Christian Bullock. Batting third, playing center field, will be Jonathan Engelman. Batting cleanup and playing third base will be Blake Nelson. Fifth and DHing today is Miles Lewis. Batting sixth and playing first base is Jesse Franklin. Playing left field and batting seventh is Jordan Wogan. At eighth is Brock Keener, playing catcher. And the shortstop, Jack Plomgren, will round out the order at number nine. On the mound today, as we mentioned, is Tommy Henry for Michigan. Henry 3-0 on the season with a 325 ERA. And he will step onto the rubber as we get set to go underway here at the University of Michigan. This will be Henry's seventh appearance of the year. He started every game he's been in. And the first pitch from Henry misses outside, and we're underway here from Ray Fisher Stadium, just a bit off the banks of Lake Erie. <laughs> just, a, just a bit, just a bit. That second pitch from Henry misses outside and as well. Henry sporting that 325 ERA in 36 innings pitch this year. It's given up 13 earned runs, 32 strikeouts to just 11 walks. That one misses high, and he's quickly behind in the count, 3-0 to start off the game here. Batting for Delaware will be Kevin Mulholland, the center fielder leading off here. Mulholland, 280 average on the season, is up in the count here against Henry. Henry comes set, and the 3-0 delivery. That one's in for a strike. 3-1 and one is the count on Mulholland. Mulholland started all 21 games he's appeared in this se season for Delaware. Yep, just missing one game so far this season. Adding with a 280 average. Hits that one on the ground to short. Up with it is Blondgren. He throws the first, and Mulholland is retired easily. For the first out of the game. So up to bat now will be Kyle Baker, the right fielder, batting second in the lineup. Baker, one of the most consistent hitters on the season for this University of Delaware team. Yeah, 361 average, looking pretty good. Gets that one inside, strike one, 0-1 oh, count. Oh, 0-1 pitch. And that one swung on and fouled back by Baker. And Henry is quickly ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh, Henry, who has those 32 strikeouts on the season, has that devastating curveball that he likes to use when he's ahead in the count, 0-2. Oh, Let's see if he uses it here. And he goes to it and misses just a little outside, was trying to get the back door in there for a called strike three. So the count will move to one and two. Baker only has seven strikeouts on the season as he swings and fends that one off down the right field line and foul to stay alive right there. Now the 1-2 pitch from Henry. 
That one swung on and hit on the ground. A weak line up to first baseman who will retire him. That is Jesse Franklin on the play. So two outs quickly here for Tommy Henry. And that will bring Diaz Nardo, the third baseman, batting third in the lineup here today. Nardo batting 277 on the year. Nardo, one of the team captains, a senior for the Blue Hens. He swings and fouls that first pitch out of play. Got to look out for the cars here at Ray Fisher Stadium as they're right next right next to the lot here. Maybe not an advantage to park so close. <laughs> and every fan is parked over there is watching for the right field. As that pitch is in there for a strike, Henry gets ahead in the count 0-2 again. And that pitch misses just low and outside. Count now goes to one and two. Henry comes set and the one two pitch just misses a little bit low. Check swing there by Baker. And then he goes around, says the home plate umpire. Keener applies the tag, and that'll be the third out of the inning. So a one two three inning here for. Tommy Henry to start off the game, and Michigan will be coming to bat. You mentioned Michigan has been on a bit of a hot streak as of late, winning nine straight games after starting off the season 4-11. and 11. In that win streak, they have outscored opponents 74 to 35, looking to do the same here today as Henry set down the Delaware hitters 1 2 3. Matt Hornick on the mound. He's got an 8.31 ERA for the season. He's one win, one loss. Uh, he made six appearances, started three of those appearances. Uh, 17 innings pitched, given up 24 hits. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does on the mound today against this strong Michigan Wolverine opening. Uh, three batters in Thomas Bullock and Engelman. Uh, looking for a good game, hopefully, out of these batters. Hornick, the left hander, is one and one on the season and only 17 to third innings pitched. Started three games in his six appearances. Has 14 strikeouts and six walks, so it doesn't strike out a lot of batters. And opponents are batting 324 against him. So definitely a pitcher who likes to pitch to contact and hasn't exactly paid off for him a lot so far this season. As it is, the University of Delaware will look to keep going here today. They've been on a bit. They've been doing pretty good to start off the season in their own right, sitting at 13 and 9 as they come in today, facing the 13 and 11 Michigan Wolverines. Up to lead off will be a KO Thomas for Michigan. Thomas stands in there at five foot eight, has been one of the most consistent players for the Wolverines going even back to last season, batting 292 on the season so far. Thomas steps in and takes that first pitch inside for a ball 1 and 0. Be interesting to see if these Wolverines can start hot today against the Blue Hens. Thomas takes that one on the outside corner 1 and 1. And Thomas, who has an on base percentage of 405 this season, has reached base in all 24 games that the Michigan Wolverines have played in. Can steal a few bases too. Absolutely. As that pitch is in there as well, Thomas falls behind the count one and two. Of course, Thomas had that 38 consecutive game on base streak last season. So for him, 24, not not as good so far, but he's working towards it. And the one two pitch from Hornick is outside ball two, two and two. It's incredible how often he can get on base. He bats a 292 average. Uh, this season, it'll be 
he's looking to you know keep building on the streak from last year. As he takes that one low, and the count runs full three and two. And what we're seeing in this at bat from him right now, the count three and two, that's something that Thomas likes to do a lot. It's a very patient hitter and doesn't like to swing at many pitches outside of the strike zone. That's what you like to see. And 3-2 pitch, swung on and hit into right field. Should be an easy play for Baker, who camps under it. And he retires Thomas for the first out. So up to bat now will be Christian Bullock, the sophomore who's playing right field for Michigan, batting second here today. Has been one of the best young players for Michigan so far this season. Bullock, of course, the sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. Bats left-handed. As that pitch from Hornick is in there for a strike. Still getting a start high in the order against the left-hander here today. So a lot of faith in him by Ed, head coach Eric Backich, even with the lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup that you would think would face Hornick, as Hornick pumps another strike in there, 0-2 on Bullock. Yeah, Bullock has to step up in the count now. Bullock, who only has 15 strikeouts on the season, is looking to avoid one here. Now the 0-2 pitch from Hornick. And he waves and misses at the high cheese. Not even close on that one. And two down for Michigan here in the bottom of the first. Four swing on that one. That was a really high pitch. Jonathan Engelman up to bat. It's 316 on the year. Engelman, 316 on the year, has been really hot as of late. Actually won co-Big Ten of the Big Ten Player of the Week honors this past week for an absolutely torrid week where he just punished opposing pitchers. Center fielder has shown some pop, and head coach Eric Backich has put him at three in the lineup as he takes that ball low, 1-0. You have to hope Engelman can get on base and start getting things going for Nelson and Lewis, potentially following as that pitch is swung on and fouled out of play. Count evens up at 1-1. One and one. Engelman been, perhaps a little surprisingly, a major source of power so far in these past few weeks for Michigan, a team that hasn't had a lot of power overall. Engelman has three home runs to lead the team and 21 RBIs. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch is swung on and grounded up to Vacone at short. He's up with a throw and a nice pick at first place by Patton to retire Engelman. And so the Wolverines, just like the Fighting Blue Hens, go 1-2-3 in the bottom of the first. And a quick first inning as we'll head to the top of the second. Again, you're listening to WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan Baseball as they take on the University of Delaware Fighting Blue Hens here today. Blue Hens have Nick Patton coming up to start off start off the second inning. Patton not doing quite as well as he's with the 189 average. He has played in all their games, though, and started in all the games. Could be uh, the Fighting Blue Hens version of Jack Longren in there for his defensive prowess. We just saw in that last play. Saved the shortstop McCone from a clear error there as he made a really nice pick on what should have been a routine grounder to short. As it is, though, Tommy Henry will come back out. Made 14 pitches in that first inning, and Henry has been lights out for Michigan so far this season. And for a Michigan team that we've seen so far this season, it's def the theme for the season so far has definitely been about growth. They had, they have a very young team with 12 freshman players, two junior college trans transfers, and Matthew Schmidt and Blake Nelson. So 14 new players for Eric Backage in this mix, and we have seen a lot so far this season that Michigan has been improving with every game, and they've really come to their stride as a play. Oh yeah, nine game win streak, not more you can ask for than that. I uh, wish they started the season a little hotter, I'm sure, but you know, right now they're riding a good wave, and they, they can keep that momentum going into the season. It should be looking pretty good. So up to bat will be Nick Patton, the first baseman. He stands in there at uh, batting from the right-handed batter's box, facing the left-hander Tommy Henry.
First pitch is on the outside corner, strike one. Patton stands in there at six foot four, two hundred and fifteen pounds, fills up every inch of that right handed batter's frame, box. As he swings and pops that one up to deep left field, going back at the wall as Wobu. He's looking up and it's gone. A solo home run for Nick Patton. He just mentioned he's got the build and he showed it right there, sending it over the brick wall in left field. All Wobu could do was look up 1 0 Delaware. Wow, using all 76 of the of that height. Going straight over the brick. Off the bat, Wogu's reaction didn't quite look like it was crushed, but that ball just kept carrying. Only 312 down the line in left field. Cleared the brick brick wall with plenty of room to spare in the end. So now to bat will be the five-hole hitter, Calvin Scott. As Henry drops a curveball in there on the outside, 0-1. Blue Hens have to be happy about that home run to get their game started. Second pitch misses outside. Check swing on that by Scott. Didn't go around, says first base umpire. Uh, one and one is the count. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch from Henry. That one swung on and popped up. Easy play in shallow right field. Drifting over towards the line is Bullock. He camps under it and makes the catch. So Scott will be retired. And that will bring up the Zach Miller, the catcher, batting sixth here today. For the University of Delaware, a lot of power scattered throughout this lineup. Patton, before that home run, had two homers. That'll give him three on the season. Scott has three homers. And even when you look towards the bottom of this lineup, as that first pitch is swung on and hit, on the ground to Thomas at second. He comes up throwing and throws to Franklin at first, and, Mil and M Miller is retired on the first play. But when you look at this Delaware lineup, they do have a lot of power scattered throughout, even towards the bottom third of the order. Yeah, you have Callender sitting on two home runs in the season, and Vinny McCone sitting on one. So, you know, it's somewhat something you got to look out for when you get to the end of the order. And with Miller's grind out, that will bring up Tyler Callender, who swings and sends that pitch on the ground to Nelson at third. Nelson up with it, throws to first strong throw to get Callender just in time. And so that will be a quick three outs here in the bottom, in the top of the second inning. But as it is, Nick Patton sends one way over the left field line for a solo homer, and Delaware leads 1 0 going to the bottom of the second inning. Beautiful sunny day here for baseball now. We're still a little chilly, but hopefully we'll see some of that spring roll around here in southeast Michigan. Not a bad day as far as Michigan standards for spring goes yeah, so oh, yeah. far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as it is, even the warm-up catcher coming out to take some tosses from Hornick as he warms up in between innings does have a sweatshirt on over his uniform. <laughs> So, not quite full spring yet, even if we are technically in spring. And so, Tommy Henry who hasn't been hit so hard this season so far. Threw that looked like a hanging curveball there to make that the top of the second inning, and Patton made him pay as he turned on it and threw it way down the left field, in the left field corner, way above that. Ball. They're playing softball just out to left center. Not sure if it quite would have made that if he had hit it in that direction, but it, it looked like it may have almost had the distance. Blake Nelson will be beating off for the whole three. Top of the second here. No, excuse me, bottom of the second. Blake Nelson, the junior, playing third base, got the last out in that inning. He is a junior college transfer. This is his first year for the Michigan Wolverines as he takes that one up and away for ball one. Nelson hitting 268 on the season. Now the 1 0 pitch from Hornick is swung on and fouled back toward the press box. So that'll even up the count at one and one. And Nelson, you mentioned batting 268 on the season. 
He's gotten a lot more playing time recently from head coach Eric Backage after that dismal start by Michigan. A lot of faith being placed in some of these younger players, and it's been rewarding Michigan as that ball was swung on and hit in the hole between short and third baseman, squeezes into left field for Michigan's first hit of the game. Nelson's aboard with a leadoff single. Good job getting on base. Something to look out for. Nelson has attempted two steals this season, being successful in both attempts. Really kicks back the green offense and he goes for it this game. And head coach Eric Backich has not been afraid to start the runner, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here as Miles Lewis will step to the plate. Lewis started off strong for Michigan, but has struggled a little bit recently, batting 241 on the season in 79 at bats. Lewis, the switch hitter, will stand in there as a right handed batter facing Lefty Hornick. Grounds that one right up the middle, should be a double play. Fielded by Vacun, steps on the back, throws to first, and. They'll call that a double play, or they're calling that a balk, I think, before the pitch. No, I believe they actually called that runner interference as pitcher wow. Matt Hornick was going towards the line. He ran into Miles Lewis, and they will award him first base. So no outs there for Michigan as they get a huge break. Nelson will move up to second base. Lewis will take first. And Michigan's got something cooking here in the bottom of the second inning. Big mistake by the Blue Hens. That should have been an easy double play. Instead, they're going to face Jesse Franklin at the plate. And Franklin started off the season very hot. Another one of those freshmen here for Michigan that head coach Eric Backich has trusted. Started 11 games of the 17 he's appeared in this season. He will bat left-handed, facing the lefty Matt Hornick. And Hornick's first delivery is in the ground. Good block by the catcher Miller there to keep the runners at first and second. Ball one there on, on Franklin. So an RBI situation for Jesse Franklin, who has 11 runs batted in on the season to go with two home runs. First baseman Nick Patton playing just on the infield grass, or I should say infield turf, perhaps expecting a bunt here from Franklin as that second ball is smothered and it squirts away, but not up far enough. So runners have to hold at first and second. Another good block there for Miller. So Hornick looks a little rattled here as... Should have had a double play ball to get him out of the inning. But they called interference on Nelson, who was going to second base, by Vacone, who was actually fielding the ball. As it is, they awarded Lewis first and Nelson second, and now Hornick's 2-0 pitches swung on and missed as Franklin gets his first strike on him 2-1. So Michigan looking to respond quickly. To Delaware's home run. It's a good opportunity to get some offense going here. Going behind to that big home run in the in the bottom of the top of the second, excuse me. Patton, the first baseman for the Fighting Blue Hens, will now move back behind the runner Lewis at first. Was playing on the infield turf just a moment ago. Lewis, Franklin, taps the bat on home plate, points it out toward the pitcher Hornick. Still keeps it pointed there. Now Hornick comes set. Franklin rests the bat on his shoulder, and the 2-1 pitch swung on and slap foul down the right field line. Count will even up at 2-2. Two and two. Franklin with 12 strikeouts on the season. Uh, something got to look out for, but he also has two home runs, so he's got a bit of power in there. As is the case for a lot of young players, and Franklin being a freshman, sometimes... The moment can get a little bit ahead of him, though Franklin has showed a lot of poise so far this season. So 2-2 count here on Franklin. Delaware leads 1-0. Still no outs here in the bottom of the second inning. And the 2-2 pitch swung on and hit down the left field line. That one's drifting over and going to be just foul into that Michigan bullpen, bullpen out of play. Long run there for Scott, the left fielder. Had to come all the way over. And that one just escaped out of play. So Franklin will get another chance here at 2-2. Two and two.
be interesting to see if Hornick comes back with another fastball. He gave Franklin one there. Might want to go with some softer stuff here. Check second. Now Hornick comes set and the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and popped up into right field. Easy play for Baker as he drips over. Nelson might try to tag at second and he's going. Throw in from Baker is cut off by the pitcher. Hornick behind the bag and Michigan will have runners at first and third with one out here in the bottom of the second inning. Runners out in the corners looking for Wogu to come up. Wogu, a very good batter, has a 407 average so far this season. One home run, 11 RBIs. So that will bring Jordan Wogu to the plate. And a good job there by Franklin. Got to two strikes in the count, didn't try to do too much, was able to lift it deep enough into right field where Nelson could tag and get to third. So now a good scoring opportunity for Michigan. And you've got a guy at the plate who has been on fire so far this season. Wogu, in his limited at-bats, has batted 407 to lead the Michigan Wolverines with 11 RBIs. As he takes that first pitch from Hornick on the inside corner for a strike, 0-1. Be interesting to see if Lewis is running here from first base. Would be a little surprised if he was with one out, being 0 for 3 on the season in stolen bases. But head coach Eric Backage, as we mentioned, has been aggressive. Hornick checks over on Lewis, now comes set. And his delivery is swung on and hit into right field. This should get the run home. Drifting back is Baker on the warning track, makes the catch. Tagging and scoring it easily is Nelson. And Lewis tags and goes to second. Throw is not in time. And Michigan, huge sack fly there by Jordan Logan, drives in a run to equalize the fighting Blue Hens at 1-1. Two sack flies in, the row for, in a row for the Wolverines. Gets one on the board. We have a 1-1 here at the bottom of the second. Good situational hitting there by both Jesse Franklin and Jordan Logan, both freshmen. Both didn't try to do too much, as we mentioned, and got that run home from third base. So Lewis, who tagged up on that play, now stands at second base, and that will bring up Brock Keener, the catcher, to the plate. Keener looks at that first pitch for a strike 0-1. Keener, a senior, really probably wants to see this team keep up this nine-game winning streak. Last go-around is catcher of the Michigan Wolverines. Brock Keener, you mentioned one of the veterans on this team. Definitely has a role as a mentor to a lot of these younger players. Keener, switch hitter, bats from the right-handed batter's box here. Hornick checks second. Now comes set. And the pitch. That one misses inside one and one. So two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. Runner in scoring position, that's Miles Lewis out at second base. Brock Keener up to bat. We're tied 1-1 following that sacrifice fly by Jordan Wogan. Hornick comes set. And the 1-1 pitch is high and outside, 2-1. and one. And Keener is another one of those Michigan batters that will be will be pretty patient, has nine walks on the season to 12 strikeouts, so doesn't usually swing at too many balls outside the zone. And he's worked the count in his favor, two and one here. Hornick's two one pitch, swung on and hit up the middle. Rounding third is Lewis, he'll try to score the throw from center fielder Mulholland is not in time as Lewis dives in as well, advancing the second on the throw is Keener. And he's got an RBI single right there. Michigan takes the lead two to one. Good base running right there from who's that? Who's that on the bag? Lewis? Lewis scores on the play from second base. And Keener advancing on the throw to second. Good hit down the middle. Just split the gap and got in for a double actually. So Brock Keener coming up clutch there with two outs. Scores Lewis from second base and a pretty decent throw from center field with Mulholland. Just looked like the catcher, Miller, couldn't quite locate it. And by the time he did, didn't have enough time to tag Lewis at home or try to make a throw down to second to get Keener, who advanced the second on that throw home. 
So that'll be Jack Blongren at the plate now as he swings and sends that one past the diving shortstop Bacone. Rounding third and trying to score is Keener. The throw will be cut off, and Michigan gets another run here with two outs. They now lead three to one. Impressive from the Wolverines right here. A couple of sack flies, you get one runner in, and then two singles score another two. We won here at the bottom of the second. So some very clutch two out hitting from the Michigan Wolverines. Blomgren was only batting 167 with runners in scoring position and two outs prior to that at bat. That'll jump out. He gets the RBI single. This time the throw was cut off, so Blomgren will stay at first base, but Michigan now with three runs in this inning, aided in part hugely by that runner's interference by the shortstop Vinny Vacone. So up to bat now will be Akeo Thomas, the leadoff, the leadoff hitter. He flew out to right field in his first at bat. Thomas steps out of the batter's box, gets the sign from head coach Eric Backich, now steps back in. Hornick comes set, checks Blomgren at first. And his first pitch to Thomas misses inside 1-0. So Michigan doing a good job of rallying here in the bottom of the second inning, doing most of their damage with two outs. Trying to do more here as Blomgren at first base. Blomgren has four steals on the season and four attempts, so he is a threat to run. As Hornick's second pitch is swung on and tapped foul one and one. And Michigan, a very aggress aggressive base running team. We saw it from there. Keener did a good job of advancing to second on that throw and there therefore was able to score on Blomgren's hit that just squeezed by Vacona at shortstop. You like to see it. You like to see that aggressiveness, but sometimes it doesn't pay off. As in this inning, though. Now the 1-1 pitch to Thomas, and before that, a throw over to first Blomgren back in with a dive. Hornick really checking the runner. Hornick trying to work out of some trouble. Limit the damage. Michigan's already gotten three runs. And Blomgren takes off on the pitch. Hit and run as Thomas sends that one down the right field line. Drifting over is Baker and Hill. Make the catch to finally end the inning for the Fighting Blue Hens. But in the inning, three runs on three hits and one error. And Michigan... Scores three to go up three to one on the fighting blue hens. Impressive inning for the Wolverines. Just a reminder that you're listening to WCBN sports coverage of Michigan baseball here today. So out to pitch will be Tommy Henry. After he gave up that one home run in the top of the second inning, looked pretty good other than that so far. Yeah, it's been impressive for Tommy Henry. Yeah, just one pitch and start. took him all the way back. But you know, if he can keep himself calm and just keep going through, these blue heads batters should be fine for the Michigan Marines. Absolutely. Yes, Henry has been one of the most dynamic pitchers for Michigan this season. Michigan dugout likes to come out and get their stretches in between the innings. Looks like they're practicing their golf swings here on the third baseline. Good time to do it. Masters coming up in a week. Who you got, Finn? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm hoping to see Tiger Woods play very well, but we'll see. Personally, I got Tony Romo. Looked pretty good last <laughs> week. I think, I think he's got some potential. Tony should stick to his day job, and that's definitely not being an NFL quarterback anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's now being prophetic for Tony Romo. <laughs> it's now a nice job. He got a good job alongside Jim Nance's CBS Oracle. <laughs> but... Definitely for Tiger Woods. It will be a big weekend at Augusta coming up next week. And a big inning here for Delaware as they look to respond to Michigan's three runs that they got here in the bottom of the second inning. It will be Vinny Vacone who made that error in last inning. He'll lead off here. Funny how baseball works that time. Works out sometimes. Seems that almost every time someone does something, they have a chance to redemption. He makes that error. He's first to lead off. Not quite sure he can do much here as he takes that first pitch for a strike. But baseball never letting you escape the spotlight, <laughs> it seems. Oh, yes. I think Bacone, 
He's not doing too well in the season. Got the lowest batting average of the starting lineup right now. He's played in all their games. Still only batting 159. As he takes that pitch for a ball one and one. And uh, pardon that, I believe it was actually catcher's interference on the play. So they knocked the catcher, Zach Miller, on that as the follow-through caught his glove. As it is, Vacone swings and lines that one right at shortstop Jack Longren. Doesn't have to move an inch and records the first out at the top of the third inning. Didn't get that redemption you were asking about, USA. So that will bring nine, up nine, the number nine, nine hitter, Eric Boren. Boren batting 321 on this season. Not a bad average for your number nine hitter. Yeah, interesting that they have him in that spot with such a high average. As he shows bunt and pulls it back just in time for to take ball one, one and up. Bowen has played in 20 of, their, of the Blue Hens' 22 games this season, has a 415 on base percentage, and has stolen five bases on six attempts. Still, he is batting number nine as Henry's 1 0 delivery misses outside. It's one of those situations where the coach sort of says to you, Oh, well, don't think of yourself as a number nine hitter. Think of yourself as the leadoff hitter to the leadoff hitter. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's uh, a good way to think about it. Yeah, got to have that positive attitude batting ninth in the lineup. As Henry's 2-0 pitch misses inside 3-0. And it would seem that that's the attitude that Eric Bowen has taken so far this season. As he's put up some pretty good numbers in the 20 games that he's played for the Fighting Blue Hens. Now the 3-0 pitch. That one's down the middle for a strike 3-1. Henry likes to work quickly when there's no one on base, waiting for Bowen to climb back into the batter's box. Now quickly comes set and the 3-1 pitch. That one misses high, and so a five-pitch walk issued to Bowen to start off the top of the third. And Henry doesn't walk a ton of batters. That's only his 12th walk now in 38 innings pitched. So it's up nicely from the lead, lead off of the lineup. Got a runner on first. That will flip the order as Kevin Mulholland, you mentioned, comes up to bat. The center fielder grounded out in his first at bat to the shortstop Longren and takes that pitch low 1 0. Michigan looking for a similar situation here. They take a grounder to Blomgren to set up that double play as Thomas and Blomgren line up at double play depth up the middle. Henry comes set, checks first, and his 1-0 pitch. That one's on the outside corner, 1-1. One one. Henry trying to climb back into it now. He's got to take care of this. these leadoff batters for the Blue Hens. As Eric Barron at first, you mentioned, does have five stolen bases as he dances off first. Henry giving him a long look over here. Now... Comes set, and his curveball misses just outside, 2-1. and one. So Delaware looking to respond to Michigan's three runs in the bottom of the second inning. Got a runner on first, one out here in the top of the third. And Henry's 2-1 pitch is swung on and sent to deep right field. Going back is Bullock at the track, reaches up, and makes the catch. Excellent fielding there by Bullock as he tosses that one back in. Bowen will retreat to first base, and Henry records the second out in the inning. Good fielding there by the Michigan Wolverines. Bullock did you know, sort of step back and look up into the sun again. Not something you say often here in Ann Arbor, yeah. but uh, <laughs> the sun is out today, not even just peeking through the clouds, actually fully out. So it'll be two outs, and up to bat will be Kyle Baker as Henry's breaking ball misses outside. It seems like Henry's just a little hes a little loose with the ball right now, these last few batters. Looks like he can't quite get that curveball to settle in the strike zone. Good point there as that pitch is swung on and hit, and it'll get down in center field just in front of Engelman. So a two-out hit, hit here from Kyle Baker, who's been on fire recently. That will bring his average back up above 360 and will be first and second with two outs for the fight. Good fielding by Angleton to make sure the first round didn't advance the third. So up to bat will be Diaz-Nardo. 
popped up to the first baseman, Jesse Franklin, in his first at-bat today. Nardo, one of the seniors and a captain of the Blue Hens. And does have 13 RBIs on the season, so nothing to sneeze at here. As he takes that first pitch down and inside, ball one. And Nardo, another one of those big hitters for the University of Delaware, stands in there at six foot two, 235 pounds. So have to be aware of his power as well. Nardo, a Delaware native as well. Maybe a little bit extra motivation. As Henry comes set, checks Bowerin at second, and now his 1-0 pitch. That one misses down as well, 2-0. He's just looking to tame it now, trying to get back in control, get out of this inning, and give himself a second to recollect his thoughts. And you can understand a little bit of why Henry's struggling with his command right now to Diaz Nardo. Not someone you really want to make a mistake to. Nardo likes to pull that that pitch down the left field line as he swings at the 2-0 pitch, and that'll be a weak pop-up in foul ground that Jesse Franklin, the first baseman, corrals. Henry escapes, no damage done as he leaves the runner stranded at first and second. Michigan will keep their 3-1 lead as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Hey, the so Henry showing some more poise in that situation, able to escape without allowing any runs. Looks like he lost a little bit of himself, lost a little bit of his command there. Blocked a runner and then a nice single up the middle there by Baker, but he was able to escape it with a nice breaking ball there on that 2 on pitch. Yeah, it helped with his field at Bullock and Engelman in the right and center field. They both did very well to get the get the deep sack fly and then to uh, limit the first runner from advancing a third. So it will be Matt Hornick back out to pitch the top of the third inning for Delaware. Hornick, though, he does now sport an 838 ERA on the season. And his sixth appearance in his three games started does go for his six innings. So you will see him push through some of those troubles at time. Two up for Michigan here in the bottom of the third inning will be Bullock, Engelman, and Nelson, the two, three, and four hitters. So Christian Bullock steps in here, struck out swinging on three pitches in his first at bat back in the first inning. Takes a first pitch curveball there from Hornick for a strike, 0 and 1. And definitely a nice pitch to start off Bullock there by Hornick. Knows that Bullock's looking out for the fastball after he swung and missed at the one that was way out of the zone last time up. Just flips a breaking ball in there for a strike as he throws another breaking ball. This time misses just outside 1 and 1. Bullock taps home plate with his bat. Now rests it on his shoulder. And the 1-1 pitch from Hornick is skied into shallow center field. Coming over is Mulholland. He'll give way to the left fielder, Scott, who makes the catch. So Bullock is retired on three pitches to start the bottom of the third inning, and that will bring up Jonathan Engelman. Engelman rounded out to Vinny Vacone, the shortstop, his first time up. Engelman not afraid to take it deep, but he's also not afraid to swing. 22 strikeouts on the season, most of the Wolverines lineup right now. Engelman likes to keep that stance back in the batter's box, as many hitters do, as he takes that first pitch in there for a strike 0-1. Engelman showed so far this season that he has deserved every bit of being at the top of that Wolverines lineup. As that pitch is swung on and chopped foul past third base. Count goes to 0-2 on Engelman. 
And down the count here, Owen 2 Engelman does have 22 strikeouts on the season. I'd like to see him shorten up his approach a little. Yeah, just play a little more defensive when you get in, the, in this hole. Just be controlled and be patient with the count. Hornet comes set. And the 0-2 pitch to Engelman is hit weakly on the ground to Bower in the second baseman. He throws to first, and Engelman is retired for the second out here in the bottom of the third inning. Seem to really go with that patience there. <laughs> <laughs> As it looks like Michigan's ball boy for the day stands in there at about uh, three foot four inches. <laughs> as they have a little kid running out there to retrieve Engelman's bat. So up to bat will be cleanup hitter Blake Nelson, one for one on the day with a single. Nelson takes that first pitch on the outside corner for a strike 0-1. Nelson batting 286 on a season after that previous at bat. Takes that pitch outside, one and one. And you got to love those small sample sizes. 41 at-bats this season. Was batting 268 going into today. Gets one hit, now he's at 286. Nice 18-point <laughs> jump in the batting average. Which this one gets a single here and might be batting above 300. Yeah. As he swings and hits that one on the ground to third. Nardo up with it. Long throw to first. Gets Nelson just in time. That will be the end of the bottom of the third inning here for Michigan. I think a play by Nick Patton to gather up Nardo's throw. A little low on the, on the toss from third. Nick Patton has shown that he has come here to play. He started 22 games for the University of Delaware this season. Hit that solo shot to left field and has made a bunch of nice defensive plays. But as it is, his team's still trailing 3-1. to one. Using that 6 foot 4 reach. Absolutely. Nice atmosphere at the ballpark here today on this Friday afternoon. The sun is out, even though it is a little bit chilly. Picking up around 40, 41 degrees. Maybe people not quite swaddled in their blankets as they normally would be. And generally a nice atmosphere here around the University of Michigan as the men's basketball team gets set to take on Loyola in the final four. Any prediction there, Finn? It's going to be a big game tomorrow for the Wolverines up against Sister Jean and the Loyal of Chicago Ramblers. It should be a fun game. Three seed against an 11 seed. We'll see if the Wolverines can sort of put an end to the Cinderella story. I do like the Wolverines, though. Xavier Simpson running the point guard. Strong matchup. If he can have a good game, get Mo Wagner going to stay out of foul trouble. Michigan basketball should be just fine. Absolutely. Got a good go do right there. Yep. Hoping for Michigan to pull out the victory against Loyola in the Final Four. Well, one thing to look at is in the three seasons, Michigan has won 30 games. Every time they've advanced to the national championship. And so, up to bat for the Fighting Blue Hens as we return to baseball here in the top of the fourth inning will be Nick Patton as he takes that one outside one now. Had to give the Michigan basketball preview as well, though. Oh, yeah. Can't avoid it. It's the talk of the town here in Ann Arbor. <laughs> so Nick Patton, who crushed that homer over the left field wall in his first at-bat, takes that one outside 2-0. So hoping to see Henry tame those pitches. Has been a little bit wild here today. Still has kept his pitch count at 35 pitches through three innings. Now the 2-0 pitch. That one's in there on the corner, two and one. Nice control. Henry's got pretty good stuff as far as it goes. Only a sophomore still, and part of improving as a pitcher, as a young pitcher, is learning to fine-tune that fastball command. As he pumps a nice curveball in there on the outside corner, all Patton could do was buckle his knees right there as he looked back at the home plate umpire and said, I can't hit that. Why are you calling that a strike? <laughs> But as it is, the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. So now the 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and skied into right field. Bullet comes in. Now drifts back to his left and makes the catch. 
So Patton has retired to lead off the top of the fourth inning. As Henry has really has really settled in following that home run he gave up to him back in the second inning. But due up now for the University of Delaware will be Calvin Scott. Scott 0 for 1 on the day, flew out to Bullock back in the second inning. Weighs the team in home runs. As he takes that first pitch outside for ball one. Scott likes to wave that bat all up above his head as he gets set. Now steadies it and takes the 1-0 pitch in there for a strike one and one. Henry working quickly comes into the set again. Works from that first base side of the rubber and delivers the 1-1 pitch. That one swung on the ground and hit between the shortstop and third baseman into left field for a base hit. Good piece of hitting right there by Scott. Didn't try to do too much with what Henry was giving him. Flipped that one between Blomgren and Nelson. All Logan could do was pick it up and toss it back into the infield. Settled for just decided to make a nice connection. That's exactly what he did. So he'll be aboard at first base, and it will be Zach Miller up to bat. Miller swings and sends that one on the ground to Nelson. Should be two. He throws to Thomas at second for one. Back to first. Double play. Mitt Henry gets the perfect pitch to escape the inning. And we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Michigan still leading Delaware 3-1. to one. Good double play there from the Michigan Wolverines. So Henry showing some chops right there. Gave up that hit, came right back on the next pitch and got the double play. So far in this nine-game win streak, it has been like that for Michigan. Seems like they've been making all the right plays so far. It's been a perfect combination of pitching and hitting, with their pitching staff posting a 289 ERA to go with 69 strikeouts in the last nine games, while they've been hitting as a team 317 overall. Impressive run of form for the Wolverines. And as we mentioned, Caught up in that and leading the charge have been Jonathan Engelman, Mikeo Thomas, and Jordan Wogu. Engelman, of course, named Big Ten Conference Co Player of the Week for last week. Wogu, two weeks ago, was named Freshman Player of the Week as well. Interesting note on Engelman that was his first Big Ten Conference Player of the Week honors in his career. So. Maybe a little bit of a sign that he'll be doing more down the stretch here for Michigan. Someone they have to be excited about. Miles Lewis will step up to bat. Reached on that catcher's interference the first time up. Big mistake there by Miller. Would have had a double play with... But as it is, they gave first base to Lewis. Nelson moved up to second base, and then Michigan began to rally with some clutch hitting with two outs. So a huge error by Miller back there in the bottom of the second inning contributed to three runs for Michigan. That first pitch from Hornick misses outside ball one. Wolverines hoping to replicate this side of the order. Hornick comes set, and the 1-0 pitch is swung on and hit on the ground to Nardo. He comes up with it, throws to first, strong throw gets Lewis. So Lewis, he'll ground out to third for the first out of the inning, and that will bring up Jesse Franklin, who's 0-1 on the day with a fly out to right field in the second inning. Franklin, only batting 217 on the season after that 0 for 1 showing so far today. Has an even tougher matchup facing the left handed Hornick as he takes that one up and in, leaning off the plate 1 0. It's one of those leaners right there. Yeah, those are the ones that got to look out for. Hornick works from the third base side of the rubber, 
So not quite throwing from behind Franklin here, but still a tough matchup for the left-handed batter as he swings and sends that one straight back foul, one and one. Franklin, a freshman, somebody the Wolverines are very excited about batting 222 on the season. Got a couple of home runs to his name as well. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch swung on, chopped on the ground to the first baseman. Patton Hill will take it to first himself. And Franklin will be the second out of the inning. So up to bat now will be another freshman, Jordan Logan. Logan sacrificed fly in his first at bat. Drove in the first RBI of the game, and from there, Michigan got two hits in a row to extend their lead to 3-1. to one. But Jordan Wogu's hit at the time. Very nice peach piece <laughs> of situational <laughs> hitting. As he takes that first pitch, low and outside, ball one. Could use a peach here today. <laughs> nice sunny afternoon at the ball game. Why not a peach? Some peach, some peanuts, some sunflower seeds. <laughs> Cracker Jacks. Cracker Jacks, as that one low pitch is swung on foul straight back, one and one. Logu, the Ann Arbor native, attended high school here in Ann Arbor. No small guy himself as he stands in there at six foot three, 225 pounds as the freshman. Swings and sends that one back to the screen again, one and two. Wogu hoping that translates into a bit of power for him so far this season, as he's shown his limited appearance that he can definitely hit. We'll have to do some hitting here as he's down one and two. Now Hornick's pitch. That one misses low two and two. Freshman showing some good patience. Wogu only with five strikeouts on the season. Looks in at Hornick, who comes set, and the 2-2 pitch. That one swung on and missed. Hornick gets Wogu swinging on a nice heater on the inside corner. And will head to the top of the fifth inning. Michigan still leading Delaware 3-1. Right, Again, right, another reminder, you're listening to WCBM Sports coverage of Michigan baseball here at Ray Fisher Stadium as they take on the University of Delaware here today. We have Joseph and Matt. And Robert and Cal. So let's see. Right across the way from guys. us. Right into left right, center field go, above guys. where it Ready, says seven power of World Series appearances. The Michigan softball team who has been on some hot streak as of late is taking on Purdue here today. So Robert and so Cal are closing it all. That's why they call it the Will Pomp baseball and softball now. complex. Nice setup, right. though. There have been a lot of complaints about this turf field as of late. Haven't really seen it impact the players so much today, but very artificial turf field, and you can understand why with the, the climate here it's in Ann Arbor. To keep, it's tough to keep a nice baseball field in these Michigan, harsh Michigan winters, especially when you're playing in March. Having a natural grass field, while it would be nice, it's tough to tough to make sense. For sure. It is definitely tough, but we have seen some odd plays so far this season where someone will hit a chopper and will just bounce way over the infielder's head and sort of settle in the shallow outfield as they can get a move signal. Can lead to some odd situations, but yeah. you do understand the motivation for wanting to have that artificial field. Players will have to adapt, it seems, going forward. Still hasn't affected Michigan much as they're eight and one at home on the season. Well, I mean that's the advantage of having this turf field. You play it on it all the time. You come in, you know, accustomed to it. When you have other teams come in, they don't have the ball and you know, bounce it off the turf and grab the grass. It, it is actually tough, and for a Michigan team that struggled early defensively. They really have picked it up as of late. Perhaps in part just because they've gotten more used to playing on this field, but they really have cleaned up a, a big part of how they've been playing, and that's contributed to their win streak. As up to bat now will be Tyler Callender. Callender, 0 for 1 on the day. Callender takes Henry's first pitch outside, ball 1. Calendar. Another one of those big hitters 
for the fighting blue hens as he takes that pitch in there for a strike one and one from Henry. Stands in there at 235 pounds. So plenty of beef in the lineup here for the fighting blue hens. And that could be a big reason why they have a lot of power as a team. As he waves and misses on that one. Took a huge cut there. Count goes to one and two. It's good to have that size. If you have that building block and you can you know, coach the talent into them, you get some good power off of it. Calendar looked like he was trying to hit that one into Lake Erie. As the one-two pitch is swung on and hit into right field, Bullock only has to move three steps as he comes in and makes the catch to retire Calendar. Well, not quite make it to Lake Erie on that one. Might have to be on a foul ball now that I think about it. But, uh, <laughs> Tommy Henry wouldn't mind as long as it was foul as he's really really settled into this game, apart from that Nick Patton homer, has looked pretty much unhittable so far. So up to bat now will be Vinny Vacone, the shortstop. And he swings and fouls that one back 0-1. Vacone 0-for-1 on the day here today. Hit a soft liner to Blomgren in his first at bat. Bacone does have a homer on the season, though he's not really known for his power. We'll take that 0-1 pitch for a strike 0-2, and, and Henry's really in a groove now. Working quickly. Wants to get right back in. He's got Bacone in the hole 0-2. Comes set, and now the 0-2 pitch. Just missed outside. Wow, that wasn't far outside. Bacone didn't swing at all. I think he was ready to head back to the dugout. But the home plate umpire said that missed just perhaps a millimeter outside, so count goes to one and two. Henry comes set quickly in the one-two pitch. Waved at and missed. Strike three, swinging on Vacone. It's interesting to watch Henry pitch and how fast he goes. You know, it just seems after gets the ball again and he's just ready to go as soon as the batter's ready. Well, we're in a groove like Henry is. Why wouldn't you want to? And he took care of Vacone on four pitches right there. Probably thought he got four strikes on Vacone. <laughs> and so, That's a comfortable pace. And so that will bring up Eric Barron, the number nine hitter. And he takes that ball low and inside 1-0. and oh. Barron did get a walk in his last at-bat. But Henry, that being the only walk he's issued today, has only made 51 pitches through four and two-thirds innings. As he pumps that one in low, 2 and 0. Now Henry will take a step off that artificial bump out there in the middle of the <laughs> infield. Readjust his cap, step back on, and the 2 0 pitch is swung on, set into the left center field gap. Going back is Wogu. He's going to get it just in front of the warning track. Nice play, by, by, nice play there by Jordan Wogu. Had to range over all the way from his spot in left field. And he was able to get there and make the catch to retire Eric Boren. So another one, two, three inning there for Tommy Henry. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Michigan still leads three to one. Again, you're listening to WCPN Sports. Coverage of Michigan baseball here today. Michigan leads 3 1 heading into the bottom of the fifth inning. My name's Joseph Gross. We're joined by Finn Store, who will now cede control of the other headset here to Eric Whitman, who will be joining us here today. Eric, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? Doing good. Michigan, great game, great day as far as you're inside. Only a light breeze outside so far, but pretty nice weather overall and pretty nice baseball for Michigan. Yeah, it's been an exciting game for Michigan. They've been honestly very aggressive on the base path, looking to, looking to get a lot of runs today, and that's what's gotten them here on their, their big win streak. Absolutely. A number of factors contributing to Michigan baseball's success as of late, one of it being aggressive base running. As Matt Hornick will be back out to work in the bottom of the fifth inning. So we mentioned that Tommy Henry had done a pretty good job of pitching so far, other than that solo homer. Hornick has those three runs, though they were though they were unearned because of that error by his catcher. 
Yeah, he's also seen to settle down, I guess, since that second inning. And his first pitch to Brock Keener, who leads off here in the bottom of the fifth inning, is outside ball one. Keener, one for one on the day, singled in an RBI in his last at-bat. Hornet comes set in his 1-0 pitch, misses down and inside 2-0. Hornick struck out two here today. Still hasn't walked anybody. He's worked ahead in the count mostly today. Falls behind here, 2-0. And now his pitch is taken high and inside, 3-0 to Keener. We'll see if Keener has a green light here with a 3-0 count. Wouldn't be surprised. I'm generally in favor of letting him hit 3-0. I think it's maybe the best pitch you'll get in the at-bat. As that 3-0 pitch is on the outside corner for a strike three and one. And right there, Keener looked like he was never going to swing at anything coming close to the plate right there. So the count will be three and one. And the 3-1 pitch misses low and inside ball four. So a leadoff walk for Keener to get things going for Michigan here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And that will bring bring Jack Blomgren up to bat. That's what you like to see if you're just going to be off that Jack Keener, that is his 10th walk on the season in just 48 at-bats. So a lot of patience here from the senior catcher. Jack Blomgren, likewise, does have nine walks as he'll come up to bat, singled and scored in his last time to the point in the second inning. Hornick comes set, checks Keener at first, and throws over there. Keener takes two steps back. Not really a threat to run is Keener, the catcher. No attempts on the season to steal any bases. Now Hornick comes set, and his first delivery to the plate is misses outside. Snap throw to first and back with the dive is Keener. Looked like Blomgren was showing bunt there, but pulled it back just in time. Takes yeah. ball one. Interesting uh, interesting strategy that might be trying to get Keener to score in position with one out. Boy, to take a sacrifice there. And we have seen that head coach Eric Backich likes to put the bunt on with Blomgren at the plate. I can't say I'm really in favor here with no outs and a runner at first. Seems like just giving the Blue Hens an out. Yeah. As Blomgren swing this time, sends it deep into left field. That one's going back, and it is just foul by three feet, maybe missed, hitting off that brick wall. And so Blomgren will go back to home plate. That just goes down as a strike to even up the count one and one. Keener will take the long trot back to first. So head coach Eric Package clearly not putting the bunt on in that scenario yeah. after he showed <laughs> it on the first pitch. It'd be interesting to see what he does here. Infielders playing at the edge of that turf grass, ready to charge, as that pitch is taken high and outside, 2-1. and one. Blomgren not showing bunt again there, so maybe head coach Eric Backage hurt us after that first one. Keener at first, no outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Michigan leading 3-1, to 2-1 and one is the count on Blomgren. And he takes that pitch high on outside, 3-1. and one. So Hornick, who hadn't walked any batters before this inning, walks Keener, now falls behind in the count to Blomgren, 3-1, and one, and that will prompt a visit from his catcher, Zach Miller. You'd think Hornick would probably try to throw some pitches down uh, in the bottom of the zone, try to induce a ground ball here, maybe get a double play. Absolutely. Not a situation where he wants to lose his command to Blomgren, the number nine hitter, with the top of the order coming up for the Wolverines. Absolutely. Blomgren with the count in his favor, three and one now. Could be swinging. Hornick checks first and his pitch. High and outside, ball four. Hornick can't believe it. He thought it was a strike, but as it is, Keener will move up to second. Blomgren will take first and two walks issued by Hornick to start off the bottom of the fifth inning. Looks like we have a mound visit here. 
as looks like pitching coach Troy O'Neill will be out here for the University of Delaware, probably trying to help his pitcher, Matt Hornick, regain some of his command. Hornick's pretty dominant so far. Wasn't really helped out by his defense there in the bottom of the second inning, but hasn't really lost his command. Issues two walks to start off here. Troy O'Neill's out, and Hornick could be out of the game soon if he doesn't settle down right here. A little bit of action going up down the right field line in the Fighting Blue Pens bullpen as they are preparing in case Matt Hornick needs to be substituted here in the bottom of the fifth inning. So that will flip the order for the Michigan Wolverines, as we mentioned. Cave Thomas will be up to bat. Thomas, in a rarity, has not reached base in his first two at-bats here today, trying to extend his consecutive games, reaching base streak to 25 here today. 0 for 2, flat out to right in both his at-bats here. Could be a bun situation as Patton and Nardo, the first and third basemen, are all the way in, ready to charge. Thomas, not showing bunt, takes that one in, ball one. Yeah, and if you're okay, okay or you just want to advance the runners at least, get at least two guys to score in positions. They're in first and second right now. Absolutely, though, I don't quite see Thomas, like the idea of Thomas bunting here with runners at first and second and no outs. I, I say make Hornick throw a strike, which he hasn't really shown that he can do so far. That's true, that's true. Infielders now retreat as Tom is swinging and sends that one on the ground. Foul past the third baseman, Nardo. Count will even up at one and one. And Thomas, who is batting 333 on the season with runners in scoring position, has an opportunity here with Keener standing out at second base. Speed on at first in Bonner. Count is one-on-one -on, -one on Thomas, who swings that bat out in front of his diminutive 5'8 stature. Now brings it back. Hornick with a long look in at his catcher, Miller. And time is called by Thomas. Corner infielders, Nardo and Patton, playing in here. Still expecting a possible bunt from Thomas. And looks like pitcher Matt Hornick stepped off the rubber there again. Not quite ready, not perhaps fully confident in what he's ready to throw to Akeo Thomas. Now he looks in and gets the sign from Miller and comes set. And the 1-1 pitch just misses the outside corner 2-1. and one. Not a bad pitch there from Hornick. Probably would have liked to get the call. Maybe you would get the call if it's... Anyone other than the five foot eight Thomas at the plate. But as it is, the count goes to two and one. Vacone holding on Keener closely at second, and the two one pitch misses high. Three and one. Great, uh, great play discipline so far by Akeo right now, just waiting for his pitch. No rush. Akeo, 17 walks on the season to 15 strikeouts. So when you're walking more than you're striking out, definitely means you have a lot of patience at the plate. That's and a great sign. Also means you're not afraid to hit with two strikes. So the count is three and one on Thomas here. As Hornick's pitch misses high and outside, and he'll load the bases with three straight walks to start the bottom of the fifth inning, and that could be it for Hornick. As out comes... Jim Sherman, as he makes the call to the bullpen, that will be it for Matt Hornick, as he cannot record an out here in the fifth inning. Came through the first four innings, gave up those three runs, though they were unearned because of that error on the catcher's interference by Zach Miller. Issues three straight walks, and he's yanked by Jim Sherman. That's a good point. You have it exactly where you want. Christian Bullock up to bat, followed by Engelman and Nelson, if they get to that. Hornick still responsible for the runners on base. 
Yeah, Kayo Thomas at first, Jack Blomgren at second, and Brock Heener at third. As into the game for the University of Delaware will be Clay Conaway, the redshirt junior, stands in there at six foot three, two hundred and twenty-five pounds. He's out of Delaware as well, so some good in-state recruiting here by head coach Jim Sherman and staff. Clay Conway on the season sporting a 397 ERA in 10 appearances. Has made those appearances exclusively as reliever as he's doing so here today. Pitching 11 and a third innings pitched. Bones are batting 238 against him. So perhaps that 397 ERA a little bit deceptive so far. Number 43, Clay Conway. Strikes has struck out seven batters and walked four in his 11 and third innings pitch. And he'll definitely be trying to get a strikeout here with the bases juiced. A strike, a strike out or at least a leap in the ball, maybe throw it to the floor side. Definitely. Not trying to go deeper with the way Tommy Henry is pitching so far. And with the way he has pitched so far this season, three to one might be like five to one at this point. And if they give up any more runs, it could be an even harder coming back. So up to bat will be Christian Bullock for the Michigan Wolverines. Bullock 0 for 2 on the day. And we should mention that with the KO Thomas walking there does extend his on-base streak to 25 straight games. So Bullock will stand in as he faces the righty Clay Conway and swings and sends that first pitch to shallow center field. Coming in is Mulholland, looking to tag from Keeners, and he's going. And the throw to home is cut off, not in time. Advancing to second and third on the play is Thomas and Blomgren. Michigan gets another sack fly by Christian Bullock. They lead 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And again, you see that aggressive uh, base running from Michigan coming in handy. Now you had uh, runners at first and second, moved to second and third, so you still have two runners in scoring position. Absolutely. Keener making Bullock look good on what was not a deep fly ball to center at all, maybe shallow to medium depth as Mulholland came in, put a strong throw just a little bit offline, couldn't quite get Keener. And by the time the catcher Miller could recover, Thomas was at second and Blomgren was at third. So up to bat will be Jonathan Engelman. He's 0 for 2 on the day and takes that pitch in there for a strike 0 and 1. Engelman batting 406 on the season with runners in scoring position. Got two of them here. Still only one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Chance for Michigan to do more damage. Conaway comes set and the 0 1 pitch. That one misses outside, a lunging block by the catcher Miller. Coming home is Blomgren, he slides in. Safe is the call. Get awareness, yeah, that's very impressive. Blomgren didn't wait at all. As soon as that ball squirted away from Miller, couldn't have been more than six feet up the first baseline. He took off. Miller took a half second to recognize where it was. By the time he could, Blomgren slid head first in and was safe. Advancing on the plate, a third was Thomas. So another run scored by Michigan. They now lead 5-1. to one. And Engelman has the count at 1-1 one and one as he swings and sends that one to shallow right field. Coming in is Baker. Be interesting to see if Thomas tags here. He's going. Baker's throw to home is cut off by the pitcher. And not in time as the throw home cannot get Thomas. That was really a shallow fly ball that He's still tagged up on that. It was a very, very aggressive play from Michigan. It's paying off again. Absolutely, as that pop-up from Engelman couldn't have been more than 10 to 20 feet away from the infield. What you could call dirt if it was any other ballpark. And still, it looked like Baker maybe wasn't expecting Thomas to tag up there. Yeah. Wasn't quite ready. Didn't have his feet all the way set. Thomas noticing that dove in just ahead of the throw from Baker. So Michigan clears the bases without any hits as that first pitch is taken for a strike by Blake Nelson, who's now up to bat. So on a sack fly, they score one. Then on a wild pitch, they get another, and then another sack fly. So clearing the bases with two sack flies and some excellent base running. 
as that one's hit on the ground. Diving is making the play as Boren. He's up to throw from his knees, and he gets Nelson. Amazing play at second base there from Boren, but a little bit too late as Michigan gets another three here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Now leaves six to one after five. And that inning sort of epitomized Michigan baseball and their win streak so far. Not a ton of hitting right there, but some really great situation. And for Michigan, it has been a great combination of pitching and hitting so far. And that will close the book on the day as well for the pitcher, Matt Hornick, who started the day for the University of Delaware. Gives up six runs, only three of them earned, though. As Clay Conway comes in relief, no runs charged to his name as he retired, as he retired three batters in a row. Still, those two sacrifice flies, as well as some poor fielding by the Fighting Blue Hens, allows Michigan to push across three. Henry's looked really good, and that's sort of been how he's been all season so far with that ERA now just above three on the season. Has really fooled a lot of opposing hitters with his combination of breaking stuff and hard stuff. And as you mentioned, only 54 pitches could go pretty deep here today. So, leading off the inning here for the University of Delaware will be the center fielder Kevin Mulholland. Mulholland 0 for 2 on the day so far. A lively atmosphere here at Ray Fisher Stadium as Michigan has jumped out to a 6 to 1 lead after 5. And Henry's first pitch at the top of the sixth inning is in there for a strike, 0 and 1. Henry likes to work quickly with no one on base. Comes set, and now is 0 1 pitch. Just outside, 1 and 1. Mulholland taps home plate with his bat, now rests it just above his shoulder, and takes that pitch outside 2-1. and one. Mulholland is a patient hitter. 12 walks and 12 strikeouts on the season. So like some of those Wolverines hitters that we saw last inning, not going to swing unless he throws strikes as he swings at that one and fouls it up and out of play back over the press box 2-2. Two two. Lance hoping for the lead off, uh, maybe, maybe single or walk, just anything to get on base right now. Absolutely. They've really struggled against Henry, who's pretty much kept him off base for most of today. As that 2-2 pitch is just outside, I guess, as the count will move full 3-2. and two. Henry probably thinks he should have gotten the strike three call there, come set, and now the 3-2 pitch. Swung on and popped up on the infield behind home plate. Going back is Keener. He'll make the catch just in front of the screen. As he launches one down the right field line, his throw escaped Franklin as he tried to throw it around the horn. A little bit of an excitement there from Keener as he made an excellent defensive play behind home plate. So now up to bat will be the right fielder, Kyle Baker. Baker, one for two on the day, as one of only three hits on the day for Delaware. Swings and sends that first pitch on the ground, fielded on the short hop by Nelson. He throws to first. Excellent play by Nelson to retire Baker right there. Sweet play from Nelson. He sort of flipped the ball up with his glove to his right hand. A little bit of swag right there from yeah. Nelson. Got some confidence. Like he filled on the short hop and flipped it up to himself, even yeah. as you mentioned. Didn't even reach in there with his hand. Says, I've played on this turf field enough at this point. I've got it. 
course, this is Nelson's first season with Michigan, so good to see him settling in. As Henry's first pitch to the batter, Diaz Nardo, misses outside 1-0. Long look in for Henry. Now the 1 0 pitch. Swung on and missed 1 and 1. Nardo, 0 for 2 on the day, like many of these other Delaware hitters. Should mention that Michigan only has three hits like Delaware, but has got the benefit of some great situational hitting and some poor defense by Delaware, as Nardo swings and fouls that one back to the screen 1 and 2. Could be Henry's breaking ball right here, the one two count. Now, Henry's pitch. And he does throw the curveball, but it misses in the dirt. No swing from Nardo, and he'll even up the count at two and two. Makes it harder to block pitches as well here at Ray Fisher Stadium with that artificial dirt as well. Just the bounces you get. Yeah. So Nardo, who has 22, uh, who has 25 strikeouts on the season, swings and misses at that one. As Henry retires him easily, as he breezes through the Delaware lineup with an eighth pitch, top of the sixth inning right there. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Michigan leading six to one here. As you listen to WCBN sports coverage of Michigan baseball from Ray Fisher Stadium. Back out to pitch for University of Delaware will be Clay Conaway. Conaway, as we mentioned, did actually sort of manage Wolverine's inning last inning. Even if he allowed three runs to come across, didn't let the game get completely out of hand. Still only trailing six to one, which in the scheme of things isn't too big. Still Conaway allowed all three runs that were charged to Matt Warren to score on those two sack flies at one wild pitch. Two up for Michigan to start. Bottom of the sixth inning will be Miles Lewis, who now moves around the bat left-handed against the right-handed pitching Clay Conway. In his first two at-bats, he batted left-handed against Wernick. Well, 0 for 1 in those at-bats. We'll just get on base here. Takes that first pitch outside for ball one from Conway. Lewis currently 250 as a leadoff hitter. Try to raise that number right now. Lewis, who did send, spend some time at the top of the lineup earlier in the season, swings and sends that one on a fly ball into shallow left field. Going back is Lacombe, but it'll be Scott, the left fielder, who comes in to make the catch. One out here in the bottom of the sixth, sixth inning. The first baseman, number seven, Jesse Franklin. So we can fly out to left field to start off the bottom of the sixth inning for Michigan. We'll bring up Jesse Franklin, who's 0 for 2 on the day. Has struggled recently after a hot start to the season. Looking to get his back, bat back working on this sunny afternoon. Swings and sends that one foul just in front of the bullpen down the third baseline. 0 and 1. Franklin, you can understand, did struggle against the left hander Hornick. Probably happy to see him out, out of the game at this point. Yeah, for sure. He's got a favorable lefty versus righty matchup here. You would think the platoon fl favors Franklin, who takes that one outside 1 and 1. Franklin steps out of the batter's box, now steps back in, waves that bat in front of him, settles it on his left shoulder, 
and looks at the 1-1 pitch for a strike on the outside corner, 1-2. and two. Franklin chokes up on the bat when he's at two strikes, as he does right now. And the 1-2 pitch is swung on and just foul tipped it back to the screen. Count will stay at 1-2. and two. Now the one-two pitch just missed outside. Count goes to two and two. Good take there by Franklin, who has 12 strikeouts on the season, but wasn't afraid to take that one there, and as a result, gets the count to two and two. It would be nice to get on right here when the will go up next. Conway comes set, and the two-two pitch misses high, and the spring is out on Conway now. Will be a very at bat. Very nice at bat from Franklin, working back from down the count one and two. And these are the at bats you like to see, even when a guy is struggling at the plate. Of course. Conaway looks in, gets the sign, the payoff pitch, swing and a miss. Got Franklin on the heater right there. Franklin just couldn't catch up to it. And so he'll go as the second out of the bottom of the sixth inning. Now up to bat will be Jordan Wogu. Wogu 0 for 1 on the day, struck out swinging in his last at bat. With that brought his average down from an on fire 401 to abysmal 393. <laughs> Wogu swings and misses at that first pitch from Conway. Looked like a nice off-speed pitch right there. Yeah, and Wogu definitely looked like he was out in front of that pitch. Kind of caught off balance there. Conway comes set. Now the 0-1 delivery is taken by Wogu for a ball 1-1. One Wogu taps the home plate with some force with his bat. Now prepares for the 1-1 pitch from Conway. And that one's outside 2-1. and one. Wogu, one of the 12 freshmen who Michigan added to their baseball team this season to fill out the number 10 recruiting class in the entire NCAA baseball and the best recruiting class in history for any Big Ten team. As he swings and misses at that one, count will go to two and two. So, though they started off four and eleven, not a huge surprise that they're now sitting here at thirteen and eleven after that recent hot streak because they are a team loaded with talent. Mm -hmm. Wogu well, seen a lot more playing time as of late, and takes that pitch. A nice breaking ball flipped in there by Conway. Strike three called. And Wogu will head back to the dugout, and Tommy Henry will come back out to pitch for the top of the seventh inning. So after six innings, Michigan still leading Delaware 6-1. to one. Although a nice inning pitch there by Clay Conway, finally able to settle down that Michigan offense that had just been causing disturbance for the Fighting Blue Hens in almost every inning so far. Finn's thoughts in the final four earlier. What are your thoughts, Eric, here as um, we look ahead to the game tomorrow? You know what? I think although Loyola is one of the lower seeds that Michigan has faced so far, I think they are probably the toughest opponent that Michigan is gonna face it, has faced so far in this tournament. Uh, Loyola, just watching them, they play beautiful basketball. They move the ball so well. They play as a team. I think they average 17 assists per game. Uh, 
Plus, uh, you got a factory that you can use, uh, sister Jean, <laughs> and uh, whatever branch that you on there as she has to be able to play a little bit too. Now, Michigan's Tommy Henry will be back out to pitch the top of the seventh inning, just 66 pitches through the first six innings, as he'll face Nick Patton. The only guy who's gotten anything done against him today, one for two with that solo home run back in the second inning. And the first pitch from Henry is a curveball that just got away from him up and outside, ball one. Can understand him wanting to start off batting with a curveball after he crushed that fastball in his other at bat. As Patton swings and lines that one just over the head of Blomgren and into shallow center field. Engelman will retrieve it, but Patton is on with the leadoff single. And now the throw back into the first baseman, Franklin, gets away from him. Not quite sure what was happening there, and Patton will advance to second. An interesting decision. You know, Patton didn't really, didn't really run, uh, run past first base that, by that much of a distance, and it looked like Engelman tried to to get him out at first base. Well, the throw behind the runner there, definitely not an advisable thing to do, especially leading 6-1 here in the top of the seventh inning. That will, we'll wait to see how that's scored, but that should be a single and an error for Nick Patton right there. As they do call that a throwing error on the center fielder, Jonathan Engelman. Definitely not a good decision there from the junior. As the first pitch from Henry is in there for a strike on the batter Calvin Scott. So Patton stands out at second after that throwing error from Engelman and up to bat will be Calvin Scott who is one for two on the day. Henry now has to work out at the stretch. Check second and the pitch misses outside one and one. And those are the type of errors that we saw from Michigan earlier in the season when they were on that, when they were losing a lot of games. Haven't seen it recently. So Henry will be forced to work out of a situation with Patton at second. Comes set, checks the runner, and the 1-1 one, one pitch is on the outside corner, 1-2. and two. Calvin Scott, who has some pop in his bat, three homers on the season, to go with 12 RBIs, looking to get the runner in from second here with no outs in the top of the seventh inning. Count is one and two on Calvin Scott here, who is a strikeout candidate with 21 on the year. Henry comes set. Checks packing at second, and the pitch. Strike three, call. Great pitch there. It looks like he kind of painted the outside corner. Henry sending Scott right back to the dugout on four pitches. Keeps Patton at second, and a huge strikeout there. Not allowing Delaware to advance the runner. So that will bring up Zach Miller, who is 0 for 2 on the day. Now Henry's first pitch is in there for a strike, 0-1. Oh, so it looks like that error didn't really phase Tommy Henry at all, who's picked up right where he left off. Of course, Zach Miller, he's batting 4-17 with runners in scoring position, so you got to be careful with him. Henry takes a long look in, gets the sign, now comes set. And his pitch in there for a strike. Oh, and two. Flipped a nice curveball in there. Buckled the knees of Miller. So Henry, who can get strikeouts, already has four of them here today. 
looking to perhaps get another strikeout of Miller here as he's got him down the count 0-2. And, and his 0-2 pitch, just a bit outside. You could hear the groans from the fans here at Ray Fisher Stadium. Didn't agree with that call at all, but count goes to 1-2. and two. Runner out at second, one out here in the top of the seventh inning. Now Henry's 1-2 pitch. That one way outside, 2-2. Two and two. You mentioned Miller batting 417 with runners in scoring position. Only batting 231 on the season. So a bit of a difference in the splits there. It would be interesting to see if he has that clutch gene here with Patting out at second base. Now Henry's 2-2 pitch. Swung on and chopped. Foul down the third baseline. So the count will stay here at 2-2. Two and two. Henry decided to go inside there after pitching outside for most of the at-bat. And not a bad pitch there. No, not at all. Miller didn't really look like he had any chance of getting around on it. He'd have to have some hands to get in on that. See what Henry does here as he comes set. And now his 2 2 pitch. Strike three called. A beautiful curveball that buckled the knees of Miller yet again. Henry gets him looking as he got Scott. Miller will go join Scott in the dugout as Patton stays stranded at second base again. University of Delaware dugout incensed at that call. Can hear him up here in the press box yelling at, at the home plate umpire. But as it is now, two outs in the top of the seventh inning, and Tyler Callender is up, and he swings and sends that one way foul down the right field line and into his own team's bullpen. Count will go to 0-1. Yeah, those are two big at-bats for Tommy Henry after allowing the he allowed a single when the runner eventually got to second on an error. He got two uh, two straight strikeouts after that. Um, didn't allow the runner on second to, to advance. Absolutely. Great pitching from Henry. As he now checks that runner at second. And his 0-1 pitch is swung on and bounced foul past the first baseman, Jesse Franklin. So looking to get the trifecta of strikeouts here in the top of the seventh inning. Now Scott Tyler Callender down on the count 0-2, and, and if you're Callender, you have no idea what to expect here from Henry. So two outs in the top of the seventh inning, Michigan leading 6-1. to one. Nick Patton at second base. And Henry's 0-2 pitch is taken high by the Batter Tylen Callender's advancing to third on a steal on that play was Nick Patton. Keener didn't even bother throwing over. I believe he thought he had strike three called. Mm -hmm. But home plate umpire called strike three there. He might have had the whole University of Delaware dugout charging him <laughs> for that one. So now the one-two pitch from Henry is swung on and hit on the ground of the first baseman Franklin. He'll take it to the bag himself, and Henry escapes without allowing a run. Michigan still leads 6-1. to one. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh inning. After some great pitching from Tommy, Tommy Henry to rescue his teammate Jonathan Abel. Absolutely. It's always nice, especially when the weather's out. Mich Michigan beating Delaware 6-1. to one. Some great pitching from Tommy Henry. They're enjoying it over there in the third base dugout. The first base dugout, I'm not quite sure that uh, Jim Sherman's team is enjoying it as much. Though, when you look at it, the... University of Delaware Fighting Blue Hens team is not a bad team as it goes. They're in the Colonial Athletic Conference, 
and they did make the NCAA tournament last season for baseball. So they are a pretty quality opponent as far as it goes. Michigan coming off a sweep in their first home series of the season against the conference opponent sweeping Michigan State. Looking to continue that momentum here today against Delaware as we head into the latter third portion of the game. That's definitely a good point. Michigan eight one at home, but they've struggled tremendously away from home. And seven on the road. So they're two and three on neutral sites. And in for the University of Delaware will be a new pitcher. It will be Nick Spadafino as senior co-captain, as we mentioned with Calvin Scott and Diaz Nardo, will be in to try to keep the score here at six to one. As his first pitch is in there for a strike. And looks like the sun may have been obscuring my vision a little as that's number 15, Chance DeFebo. Either way though, an important inning for Fighting Blue Hens as that pitch is in there and grounded foul down the third down the first baseline one and one. Rock. This is DeFebo's first appearance of the year, so we'll see how 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 he plays. So no book on DeFebo here for the Wolverines as Brock Keener up to bat. He's one for one on the day. As he looks at that one one pitch way outside. Count will go to two and one. Now the two one pitch misses outside as well. Three and one is the count. As Keener swings at that 3-1 pitch, dribbles it foul past the first baseman. And, no, I believe my eyes did not deceive me in the first place, as that is number 18, Nick Spadafino. A little bit of confusion going on here up in the booth. But it is Spadafino, so not Chance DeFebo making his debut. It is number 18, not the 15. As his 2-2 pitch is swung on and looped into left field. And on to make the catch is Scott for the first out of the inning. Sometimes those eights and those fives are pretty similar. <laughs> Absolutely not. As let's get to you those stats on Nick Spadafino. It's 844 on the season and 26 and two thirds innings pitched. Has 21 strikeouts to go with seven walks with a win loss record of 0 and 4 as his first pitch to Blomgren misses outside ball one. Now he comes right back in and pumps a fastball in there for a strike one and one is the count. Now is 1-1 one, one pitch, misses low, and 2-1 and one is the count on Blombrin. Blombrin, who's picked up his offense in the past week, still only sitting with a 227 average, but was sitting at about a buck, buck 50, buck 60 a week or two ago. One for one on the day with an RBI single. Swings and sends that one down the left field line for a foul. Count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, his average is pretty low at 227, but his on-base percentage is at 362, so he's finding other ways to get on base. Absolutely, as he has that walk here today. So go with his single as he swings and chops that one foul past the third base in Fat Nardo. Keep the count alive at 2-2. Two and two.
So no one on base here in the bottom of the seventh inning. One out, and the 2-2 pitch to Blomgren. Nails him right between the one and the eight on the back of his jersey. He'll take the trot down to first base. So, he's got a feet out of his long right there as he just nailed him in the back. That one's going to hurt a little, but not as much as having a runner on base with a KO Thomas. Yeah. Thomas 0 for 2 on the day, but he did walk in his last appearance and eventually score on a very shallow sack fly hit into right field as Spadafino checks Blomgren at first. So he has extended that consecutive games reaching base to 25. Spadafino comes set and the pitch. Thomas swings and fouls that one off his shit. Count goes to 0 and 1. It's one of those where you'll take the slow walk out behind home plate. Yeah. Home plate, he was hobbling for a bit. Probably hurt. Thomas doesn't wear a shin guard, so nothing to protect that exposed shin right there. As Blomgren on first base, four steals on the season. And now the 0 1 pitch. That one misses outside, 1 and 1. Badafino looks in, taking his time now with the runner on base. Has to work out of the stretch. Comes set. And now the 1-1 pitch to Thomas is way outside. That one almost fooled the catcher Miller, who had to lunge way past the other batter's boxes to snag it. It's a second pitch like that, this at bat. You, know, you got to wonder maybe if they're sort of doing a pitch out, they see uh, Blomgren has been leading off first base. If you try to get him out of first. If it's a pitch out, not sure Miller knows it's <laughs> happening. As that pitch is a little bit too far away for Miller. It gets back him back past him and goes to the backstop. Longman will take the trot down to second base as the count goes to three and one on Thomas. So he pitched out right there, but uh not quite in the way you were talking about, and at least a blonder in a second base. So an RBI situation for Thomas, who's batting 333 on the year with runners in scoring position. Now the 3-1 pitch misses outside, and Thomas will take his second walk of the day. So runners will now be at first and second for the Michigan Wolverines. Speed on the bases, and Thomas at first and longer than second. And up to bat will be Christian Bullock. As Nick Spadafino has worked himself into a bit of trouble here in the bottom of the seventh inning. So Christian Bullock steps into the batter's box. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Did have a sack fly back in the fifth inning. As he swings at that first pitch and chops it foul by the first baseman, Patton, strike one. Michigan uh, showing great play discipline this whole game. They only have three hits, but they've had a lot more base runners than just those three. Absolutely. They're actually getting out hit on the scorecard by Delaware, yeah. four to three. But that doesn't quite tell the full story. Michigan taking a lot of walks here today. And advancing runners when they need to. So two on in the bottom of the seventh. And now Spadafino's 0-1 pitch is swung on and foul tipped. Count goes to 0-2 on Bullock. Spadafino. Does have 21 strikeouts on the year, but those have come in 26 and two-thirds innings pitched. So not a huge strikeout pitcher. As he'll try to get Bullock down the count 0-2, and he does just that as Bullock swings over the top of a ball that 
hit the dirt right there. Strikes out on three pitches and a big out for Spatafina. So Spatafina records the second out of the inning. And up to bat now will be Jonathan Engelman. Engelman 0 for 3 on the day. As runners out in second and first, an RBI situation. Spatafino looking to escape some trouble. Wolverines had one out with runners at first and second base. After that strikeout, now find themselves with two outs as that first pitch misses high and outside to Engelman, ball one. Engelman only a 182 hitter with two outs. See if he can do something here. And a bit of an odd statistic for Engelman, who has batted 306 on the season. So. For sure. Not quite sure what's going on there. As the 1 0 pitch to Engelman, he checks wings, appeal to first. First base umpire says, Yes, he did go around, and they'll call that a strike one and one on Engelman. Now Spatafino comes set, and his 1 1 pitch nails the inside corner, 1 and 2. So some nice pitching there from Spadafino, working Engelman outside, then coming back inside. Mm -hmm. Not giving him anything easy to hit. So two outs in the bottom of the seventh inning. Runners at first and second for the Wolverines, leading six to one. Spadafino comes set, and his one-two pitch swung on and missed, and he escapes the inning without giving up any runs. After and the Wolverines strand runners at first and second, we'll head to the top of the eighth inning. Michigan still leading six to one after seven. Again, thank you for listening to WCPN sports coverage of Michigan baseball here at Ray Fisher Stadium. As the Wolverines have looked dominant here today, and what's been the story in your mind, Eric, here today for Michigan baseball? Um, I think their overall aggressiveness, um, you know, with, as I said previously, what got them on this winning streak was um, getting runners in scoring position and driving in those runs. Um, and they've done just that today. They've got runners in scoring position almost every inning, it seems like. And uh, to help with that, Tommy Henry's been doing a great job controlling the game from the pitcher standpoint. Not giving to away really any chances to get back. Absolutely. Tommy Henry, as you mentioned, has been lights out, is coming back out here to pitch the top of the eighth inning. Some sweet Caroline from the ballpark, but nothing too sugary here today for the University of Delaware. Definitely no cookies to hit. Even that one that Nick Patton hit out wasn't an easy one. He just sort of hit a pretty decent pitch way over that left field brick wall. So leading off for the Fighting Blue Hens here in the top of the eighth inning will be Vinny Vacone. Vacone 0 for 2 on the day and one of those five strikeout victims for Tommy Henry. Average now sitting at a measly 155 after those two plate appearances so far today. As he'll swing and miss at that first pitch from Tommy Henry on one. Bacone, that was his 26th strikeout of the year in 71 at bats. Pretty high strikeout rate as he takes that one on the outside corner from Henry and he's quickly down on the count 0 and 2. Henry comes set, wants to take about three seconds in between pitches here. And now the 0-2 pitch to Vacone. High. Count will go to 1-2. and two. See if he goes back to that curveball here. And it is a devastating curveball. And for Vacone, who's swung at that first pitch that wasn't very close to the zone, maybe it's something you want to pursue. So now Henry's 1-2 pitch. Check swing by Vacone didn't go around as Keener smothered that curveball in the dirt. Good call there. <laughs> but 
Would you come back here with the curveball after that one? Not again. I think he showed curveball a lot with two strikes. Don't want to be too predictable. So now the 2-2 pitch from Henry is swung on and lined up the middle. Thomas will range over, and he makes a leaping grab on that soft liner to retire Vacone for the first out in the inning. Well, he showed a lot of athleticism there. Get another. Thomas at five foot eight does need to get up on some of those plays, showing that his height is definitely not an issue. He ranged over, looking like Dustin Pedroia right there, cover in the middle. As it will now be Eric Barr in the number nine hitter who steps in and takes that one outside or er, in the strike zone. Zero and one. Barun climbs back in and bunts at the 0-1 pitch. A pretty decent bunt test. The first baseline coming over to cover is Thomas, and he won't get there in time as Boren gets himself a bunt single and gets things perhaps cooking here for the Fighting Blue Hens in the top of the eighth inning. Interesting decision. <laughs> I wasn't really sure about the thought process there, but he, he laid down a great one and was able to get, get on base. It's one of those bunts where you just – Put it perfectly in between the first baseman and the pitcher. Yeah. They hesitate for a minute, not quite sure who's going to pick it up. Thomas, who was shaded up the middle, had to sprint all the way across to try to get to first base. Couldn't beat Boren to the bag. So that will bring up the top of the order in Mahalan, who takes that one inside ball one. Mahalan, 0 for 3 on the day. As Boren stands at first. Boren has five steals in six attempts this season, so he is a threat to run, though down 6-1, not too sure if he's doing that. Mulholland swings and grounds that one to Thomas up the middle. Thomas steps on second, throws to first, not in time, as Mulholland, the center fielder, just beat it out. That was one of those situations where maybe if you're not playing on turf, it's a double play, but... He hits that one hard into the turf, and that first bounce just goes a little bit higher than it would on normal turf. So as it is, Mulholland will be on first aboard on the fielder's choice. Two outs now here in the top of the eighth inning, and in the bat will be Kyle Baker. And taking off on the pitch is Mulholland for second. The throw in from Keener misses and goes past Thomas into center field, and advancing to third will be Mulholland. So Mulholland making the best of his fielder's choice, stealing second, advancing to third on a bad throw there from Brock Keener. Looked like the throw almost hit Mulholland. I don't know if it actually got there. It's a close call. Close call for Mulholland, absolutely, as he now stands on third base. And retaking his time before climbing back in now. Wanted to get the count there. It is 1-0. and And now his 1-0 delivery to Baker. That one misses outside, 2-0. and So two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. Mulholland now at third. And Baker at the plate. He takes that 2-0 pitch in there for a strike, 2-1. Kyle Baker batting 450 with runners in scoring position. He mentioned that he was one of their best hitters as he swings and pops that one foul on out of play down the right field line. So not a surprise to see that he's batting 450, but that is quite the rate with, one, with runners in scoring position. He's also batting 565 with two outs, so he's been a great hitter in pressure situations. Absolutely, as he'll look to do that here. With two outs here in the top of the eighth inning, count 2-2, two, two, and the pitch by Henry is swung on and grounded softly on the short to Blomgren. He backhands, throws to first, not in time, as Baker beats that one out for an infield hit. Chalk it up as an infield single and an RBI for Kyle Baker, and Delaware gets their second run of the game. 6-2, to two, Michigan now leads. So Henry induced weak contact there. And he got Baker to dribble that one on the sh on to short on the ground to shortstop Blomgren. Blomgren, all he could do by the time he got that one was flip it to first, not even close to getting Baker. 
So it'll be Diaz Nardo who now steps in with Baker on first as he takes that one in for a strike 0 and 1. Henry now comes set. Checks first. And the 0 1 pitch. That one swung on and gulped foul down the right field line, not a play. So on that throwing error there by Brock Keener, Mulholland advanced to third as that pitch misses low, one and two. Mulholland advanced to third. Wouldn't have scored on that infield hit if not for that throwing error by Brock Keener. Yeah, that's true. Good point. As it is, Henry can still get out of the inning with Michigan leading six to two as he now his one-two pitch. High and outside. Count goes to two and two. Could be the last of what we see from Tommy Hunt, uh, Tommy Henry, excuse me, today. Henry comes set, checks the runner, and his 2 2 pitch misses in the dirt. Good block there by Keener to keep the runner. Kyle Baker at first. Baker does have some speed. Six stolen bases in eight attempts this year. So, two outs here in the top of the eighth inning. The count is now full to Diaz Nardo. The payoff pitch, way inside, as that one actually goes to the backstop. Doesn't make a difference as it is, as that was ball four on Diaz Nardo. So he'll go down to first base. Baker goes to second. And will be inter interesting to see if head coach Eric Backich keeps Tommy Henry here in the game. Yeah, for sure. His count getting close to 100 right now in the eighth inning. Covering right about 90 pitches right now. Michigan has some action going down in their bullpen, as it looks like it will be pitching coach Chris Fetter out to talk to Tom Henry. It's one of those situations where Henry has pitched so well all the game, he does give up his second run there, and he is charged as an earned. But in that situation, you sort of want to let him keep battling here, maybe make one more batter and let him try to finish it. Long conference on the mound here between Chris Fetter, Brock Keener, and Tommy Henry. Chris Fetter finally finishes relaying his message and takes the slow walk back to the third base dugout of the Michigan Wolverines. So Tommy Henry will be staying in the game here as he'll face the right-handed hitting Nick Patton. Perhaps another reason for that mound is it don't want to give up a three-run homer here to Patton. Michigan leading 6-2 to two in the top of the eighth inning. Two outs. Baker at second, Nardo at first. Patton at the plate. And the first pitch to him misses outside, ball one. Michigan outfielder shaded pretty deep here as the left fielder Wogu and the right fielder Bullock not more than 5, 10 feet off the warning track. That's a good point. Now the 1-0 pitch. That one misses outside as well, 2-0. So perhaps a little bit tentative here by Tommy Henry. Doesn't want to challenge Nick Patton. With two runners aboard here in the top of the eighth inning. Now his 2-0 pitch. That one catches the inside corner, 2-1. and one. Good pitch right there. And Patton stands in there at 6'4", pretty close to the plate. Not quite sure what his coverage is of the inside corner. Maybe a good place to attack it. Patton swings that bat out in front of him. Now rests on his back shoulder and swings at that. 2-1 pitch and sends it into right field. Should be playable for Bullock, who drifts over and makes the catch. So Tommy Henry works out of that inning, only gives up one run, aided in part by that throwing error by catcher Brock Keener. So Delaware tacks on one run. Michigan still leads 6-2, to two, heading to the bottom of the eighth inning. And that should be it for Tommy Henry here today, but a very impressive performance.
make a shot. Absolutely. So Tommy Henry in line to get his fourth win of the season if everything goes right here for Michigan today. Looks like it will be the same pitcher out for the fighting blue hen to Nick Spadafino here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Of course, Major League Baseball kicking off opening day yesterday. Not looking like a great season for the Detroit Tigers, but uh, crazy action around the major leagues as John Carlos Stanton hit two home runs in his first game for the New York Yankees. And, whew, Bronx Bombers are back, aren't they? The same thing, too. <laughs> 435 feet is the second homer. I believe that first one homer I read something that said that it had a, it went opposite field and it had an exit velocity of 117.3 miles per hour, the fastest exit velocity on an opposite field homer in the Statcast era. Absolutely nuts from John Carlos Stanton. And now up to bat for Michigan in the bottom of the eighth inning will be Blake Nelson, who takes that one high and outside. Nelson batting fourth for the Wolverines, basically in the same position as John Carlos Stanton. Yes. He is one for three on the day, singled back in the second inning. As he takes that one on the inside corner for a strike one and one. Nelson. The junior transfer steps in and swings at that one and back to the backstop. Foul, it goes. Count goes to one and two. Climbs back in, eager to get back in the count as he's down one and two, and Spadafino's pitch is swung on and laced up the middle for a hit. Spadafino had to duck out of the way as Nelson hit an absolute BB up the middle there for a leadoff single. Yeah, he got great contact on that, absolutely drilled it. <laughs> Not quite sure what the exit velocity is on that, but just assume 117.3 miles per hour just to be safe. <laughs> but Blake Nelson aboard with the leadoff hit, and that will bring up Miles Lewis. Lewis 0 for 2 on the day. Reached on that catcher's interference back in the second inning, which really shaped a lot of this game so far. He's missing a lot of momentum for the rest of the game. So Nelson will flip around to the left side here. And he's bunting on that first pitch, but he bunts it foul. And the count will go to 0-1. So head coach Eric Backich, even leading by four runs here, 6-2 to two in the bottom of the eighth inning with no outs, is putting the bunt on with Nelson at first and his number five hitter at the plate. Nelson climbs back into the batter's box. Be interesting to see if the bunt is still on here. As the third baseman, Nardo, is charging. And that one's taken inside. Going for second is Nelson, and he's in there with a straight steal of second. So no bunt there by Lewis, who pulled it back for a ball. Didn't look like Nelson was looking back there, so looked like he had decided he was going before the pitch. And will award that steal to Nelson. That's his third steal of the season in three attempts. A perfect 100%. So now Lewis with the runner at second and the count at one and one on him. And he swings at Spadafino's pitch and dribbles it back to the backstop one and two. Michigan's definitely looking for another insurance, uh, insurance run. Can't hurt. Absolutely can't hurt <laughs> as far as it goes for the Michigan Wolverines. Can only hurt. University of Delaware at this point. So Miles Lewis, 0 for 2 on the day, has got Nelson at second. And now the 1 2 pitch from Spadafino. Inside corner, strike three called. Lewis doesn't agree with the call, but all he can do is hang his head and go back to the dugout on a pretty amazing pitch right there from <laughs> Spadafino. <laughs>
And now up to bat will be Jesse Franklin. Franklin 0 for 3 on the day. Takes that first pitch outside from Spadafino, ball one. So Nelson out at second on that straight steal. Michigan leading 6 to 2 here in the bottom of the eighth inning with one out. And the freshman Franklin up to bat. Spadafino leans in. Now gets the sign from his catcher, Miller, comes set. And the pitch misses low and inside, 2-0. and Or a strike is called by the home plate umpire. Looked a little low, but 1-1 one one is the count on Franklin. It's kind of, you know, going inside a lot so far, this not it? Has worked out for him so far as he got Miles Lewis looking in his last at-bat. And now Franklin waves and misses on that outside heater to move the count to 1-2. and two. So decent speed at second in Blake Nelson with Jesse Franklin up to bat. Michigan looking to add on a run to their 6-2 lead. As Spadafino comes set in the 1-2 pitch is way outside 2-2. Two and two. And this is one of those situations where even though it's not of something so important for Michigan to get this run. You'd like to see a good at-bat from Jesse Franklin. Yeah, for sure. Franklin calls time, granted by the home plate umpire. Yeah, plus you have a couple more games left against Delaware this weekend. It would be nice to get the pitch count up from the relievers. Um, might, might tire them out for the rest of the series. Absolutely a good point. Wanting to get into that Delaware bullpen as a pick play back to second base. Doesn't quite get Nelson, who's back in there with a the dive. Spadafino comes set and his 2 2 pitch is tapped on the ground. Foul. And the count will stay at 2 and 2. So Blake Nelson out there at second base after he stole second during Miles Lewis's at bat. Count 2 and 2 on Jesse Franklin, who's We've seen some pitches here from Nick Spadafino. As the runner Nelson is taking off for third, before Spadafino had even come set, Spadafino casually tosses it to the third baseman, Nardo, and he tags out Nelson about 10 feet from the bag. Well, Michigan's been so aggressive the whole game. I guess at some point it was going to come back to bite them. There it is. But luckily they have a pretty safe lead right now. So right now it doesn't hurt them too much. Not quite sure what was happening right there for Blake Nelson. There's aggressive base running and then there's aggressive base running yeah. <laughs> as that pitch is swung on and foul tipped at home plate by Jesse Franklin. So no runners on base now for Michigan, who's clearly just looking to end this game right now, yeah. wants to get back out there for the top of the ninth inning. It's been a pretty short game overall as we're just coming up on about 2 hours, 20 minutes. As that pitch from Spadafino misses just outside, and the string is out. So, Spadafino comes set. No one on base now for Franklin. And the 3-2 pitch, waved at and missed. Strike three swinging on a nice changeup away from Spadafina. Changeup broke away from the strike zone there. Got Franklin swinging, great pitch. Yeah. 
So we'll head to the top of the ninth inning and do up for University of Delaware in their last chance. Will be Calvin Scott, Zach Miller, and Tyler Callender, the five, six, and seven hitters, who were combined on the day are one for nine. It will not be Tommy Henry back out there for Michigan as he goes eight innings, allows two runs on six hits. Looks like instead of Tommy Henry, will be another left hander, Will Try Buker. Maker on the season. One of those reliable arms for head coach Eric Backage, who's done pretty good. Tribuker sporting a 196 ERA in eight appearances, seven of those coming in relief, amounting to 18 out of first innings pitched. Good strikeout to walk ratio as well, with 21 strikeouts and seven walks. Opponents batting just 194 against Will Tribuker. comes out to the song the show goes on all night by Lupe Fiasco. That's exactly what it's been for Michigan here today. The show has gone on. They're looking for their 10th consecutive win and in prime position to get it here as they lead 6-2, to two, just three outs away. Absolutely. And we'll try to we'll look to pick up where Tommy Henry left off. So University of Delaware's first batter in the top of the ninth inning will be the number five hitter, Calvin Scott. Scott, one for three on the day. A single back in the fourth inning. Of course, Tri Buker comes out of that Michigan bullpen with excellent stuff, contributing to his 196 ERA on the season as he pumps in a fastball there for strike one on the outside corner. You can just see the velocity. No radar guns here at Ray Fisher Stadium, but you can tell he's got that violent delivery, and he absolutely pumps gas in there. As that one swung on and hit on the ground to Thomas, easy play for him as he throws to first to retire Scott for the first out of the ninth inning. So two pitches and one out there for Will Tribuker. As it will now be the catcher, Zach Miller, who looks to get aboard. Miller, the freshman, 0 for 3 today against Tommy Henry. As he swings and pops that one on the shallow right field coming over is the second baseman Akeo Thomas long run makes the catch just by the right field line I mentioned a long run I mean that was way into the way into right field and fell territory that was very impressive and we should mention before uh, Tribuca records the third out of the inning that Joe Pace is in in right field as a defensive replacement so, University of Delaware down to their final out here, and it'll be Tyler Callender 0 for 3 on the day as he swings and sends that first pitch from Will Tribuker on the ground to Blomgren. Blomgren up with it, throws to first, picked by Schmidt, ball game. Michigan wins 6 to 2 against the University of Delaware. Will Tribuker comes in, makes four pitches to record three outs here in the top of the ninth inning, and business as usual for the Michigan Wolverines. Throwing the heat is an understatement with Will Tribuker. Through absolute gas, not throwing Michigan heat, throwing some Florida heat down there. But Michigan will get the win on the day. They improved to 14 and 11. Improved to 9 and 1 at home. University of Delaware drops to 13 and 10 and 4 and 5 on the road. For the Michigan Wolverines, Will Tribune, you mentioned, got that hit. They'll be back here tomorrow at Ray Fisher Stadium in Will Pond Baseball and Softball Complex, taking on Delaware. 
looking at either an 11 o'clock or a noon start game here today. And we'll have that coverage for you as well. As well as coverage of their game on April 1st here at 1 p.m. at Ray Fisher Stadium. Getting the win on the day for Michigan was Tommy Henry. He moves to 4 0 on the season. A seven game start. Getting the loss was Matt Cornick. He moves to 1 2. No save situation for Will Fryer as Michigan was up 62. But still an excellent job right there in the ninth inning. Again, we want to thank you for listening to WCBS News coverage of Michigan baseball as they defeat Michigan Wolverines. Delaware fighting blue hens 62 years today. Any final thoughts here before we sign off? Great time. Absolutely. <laughs> Eric said it. And make sure to tune back in tomorrow as Michigan will look to tell on, take on Delaware again. And thank you for listening to the broadcast. Have a nice weekend and go blue.